I just feel like we need to listen to her. And the ocean and red jellyfish, weird creams and serums. Like here's one called the crown and it's like a circle, like a crown. It wasn't great, it wasn't great. guys welcome back to another video um so february was quite a short month obviously but i feel like it's been a long time <laughs> since i've sat down and done um a little reading wrap-up video so i read six books this month so not too bad three audiobooks which is like probably a record for me i haven't been um, super into audiobooks lately. I think it's because I was having technical difficulties with the Libby app. Anyway, I've been using Spotify, which is amazing that they have audiobooks on there like as an option. It's not just music obviously anymore. I'll be listening to a chapter like if I'm on chapter 5. I'll be done with chapter 5 and it'll be like chapter 12 and I'm like no. <laughs> so it's been like jumping out of order. I don't know what the deal is there but three audiobooks this month um, and then three physical books which I have here as well. I don't know. It's kind of a mixed bag if I'm being completely honest. Um, so let's get started. Alright so the first audiobook that I listened to, the first book that I read, um, was was Big Swiss by Jen Began. Um, I've never read her before. I've never read a book exactly totally like this and it was okay. I think I gave it like a three and a half stars. Um, essentially we're following our main character Greta um, and she's a transcriptionist for a local therapist in town. So she lives in New York um, and she for a living transcribes the audio um, of his therapy sessions but it's not normal therapy it's sex therapy. <laughs> so we get some really interesting um, conversations around that. And essentially what happens is she goes into town one day for something and recognizes one of the voices um, on one of the audio tracks that she's been transcribing. And it happens to be a Swedish woman who she's like weirdly become obsessed with. Um, and she ends up calling her Big Swiss. That's like her nickname that she's come up with for her. And so Greta, even though obviously it like goes against um, everything that she signed up for when she did this job because of like patient confidentiality and all of that, um, she basically becomes involved with Big Swiss, this woman. I think the most interesting thing about it is that you know eventually she's gonna have to tell the truth. And so you're kind of waiting for that moment to happen. And I've read other books like contemporary not really romance, but contemporary books before where the relationship is like based on a lie and or there's some sort of like truth that's been withheld. And so that kind of keeps you reading because you're waiting for that big moment and that scene um, to happen where, you know, the, the main character gets found out and it was just okay. I'm just not super interested in contemporary stories. There's just not enough there for me, if that makes any sense. Um, and so I just felt like it was kind of it was a story. It was a book. I don't know. <laughs> if you like um, like maybe Normal People uh, by Sally Rooney, those kinds of just like contemporary following two people's relationship kind of books, um, I would say you might like it. It's honestly less interesting than Normal People. I really liked Normal People, even though it's really polarizing. Anyway, so it was okay. I, I think I need to kind of steer away from those types of books though because they just don't, they just don't do it for me. Then I think the one that I finished next uh, was a physical book and this was a like body mind spirit book. It's been a while since I've read something like this and I used to have like I was on a kick years ago of reading all sorts of like you know spiritual psychological type reads um, like a lot of Abraham Hicks and that kind of thing. Anyway um, I was just kind of in the mood for something like that and so this is Gary Zukov's The Seat of the Soul and again this was just kind of okay. I mean it was interesting. It's definitely like a chewy read. Like you, <laughs> it's it's food for thought for sure. I think I kind of took it all with a grain of salt because you do have somebody literally claiming to know about souls and like what they are and what they're made of and where we came from and um, the difference between human souls versus animal souls and it's fascinating but I came at it more from the perspective of kind of like research for a novel that I'm writing, a dark academic story um, that I've been brewing on um, and it's kind of been stewing for years actually. I had the original idea in October 2020. So anyway, it has to do with like souls. I'm not gonna say anymore, but <laughs> it, so this is kind of like 
a textbook that I was using to do research for my book, if that makes any sense. Um, so I was just kind of curious to see what he had to say. And it is fascinating, um, but you just kind of have to, you have to be careful with books like this, I feel like, because I don't know where he's getting his information from or if it's just all completely made up. Um, I don't know how you would possibly do research for something like this. Um, but it was, I mean, it's interesting to like think about. Um, it's kind of more of a, I don't know, I took it more of as like a thought experiment. So for, for what it is, it's four and a half, four, four and a half stars, something like that, I guess. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's weird giving a star rating to a book like this. The main thing that he talks about in here, the concept that like he sort of comes up with is that we are currently just five sense beings. Like obviously we have our five senses. Um, and he says we're sort of breaking into this new world or almost sort of like he, he imagines us soon evolving into almost a new species where we develop a sixth sense. And that's that sixth sense is just us aligning our personality with our soul, like who we truly are deep down. It's kind of a, it's very like metaphysical and kind of kind of woo woo and out there. Um, so if you like books like that, I feel like if you, if you do like books that are kind of like Abraham Hicks, like teachings of Abraham kind of books, there's a certain like suspension of disbelief that you have to have, <laughs> like you have to come at it from a certain mindset. You have to have a very open mind for sure if you're going to even consider some of the things that he puts forth. But it was it was interesting regardless. It's one of those books where it just makes you have different thoughts than you normally do. Um, and so that for that reason it was kind of it was it was interesting. And then the next audiobook that I listened to was Rouge uh, by Mona Awad. This was my favorite audiobook probably my favorite book of the month. Um, now, if you are familiar with Mona Awad, meaning you've read Bunny, then you kind of know <laughs> what to expect. So she is somebody who writes non-reliable narrators. Um, she, she really uh, puts forth characters who you don't know if they're delusional, if they're dreaming the whole time, if they're basically in a psych ward and this is all just like made up in their head, um, if they've just experienced some sort of trauma that is causing them to see things that aren't really there. It's it's one of those books where you never really know truly what's happening or what if it's just happening inside the main character's head. In Rouge, we're following Belle. She's our main character. Um, her mother has recently passed away and she's left uh, behind a dress shop and a lot of debt. And her mom was also involved in this weird cult-like spa retreat thing um, that she never would really say much about, but she would go get treatments from there. Um, and so Belle is like sort of familiar with it, but she's never really gone herself. And so um, basically we watch her get more and more involved and entrenched into the people who go to the spa and she gets treatments herself and things start happening in her life that are basically unexplainable and just kind of make her seem like she's crazy and totally off her rocker. For example, Tom Cruise plays quite a big role in this. Um, she starts seeing somebody, this isn't too much of a spoiler, I don't think, but she starts seeing somebody, a man, like a shadow in the mirror, um, like in her mom's vanity mirror. He looks like Tom Cruise to her. And so she starts calling him Tom Cruise. At the same time that it just is gonna sound like complete nonsense, it also might sort of, be kind of spoilery. So I feel like I can't really say too much, but some of the comps for this book were, um, one of them was Eyes Wide Shut, which is a Tom Cruise film. Um, it was Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman was the wife. So they were husband and wife um, in, well, in real life at one point, but in, in the movie, they were husband and wife. And he somehow, he meets somebody, a friend or somebody tells him about this weird, mysterious mansion where these people go and do, uh, very adult things and so he's so curious that he wants to go himself and he gets he manages to get the password from his friend and the address um, so it's it's a very adult film I'm pretty sure it's rated our boyfriend and I just watched it recently which is kind of funny um, that was one of the reasons why um, I wanted to read the book aside from already being familiar and liking Mona Awad's work is because I wanted to see what kind of similarities it had with Eyes Wide Shut honestly not that many just the fact that it's basically like a cult story that was kind of the most and tom cruise was involved in it that was kind of the only real connection that i found i feel like the writing is a little bit better in rouge i loved the images like there's so many like i just think of like red lipstick and violets and smoke and the ocean and red jellyfish and 
weird creams and serums. I don't know, it's very, it has like a very lavish, sexy, red lipstick sort of vibe to it. I don't know if that makes any sense. It definitely has a very open ending, so you just have to be comfortable with knowing that you're probably not gonna get many answers to a lot of the questions and things that are brought up and a lot of the scenes aren't gonna feel, it doesn't really feel like it has like a finite ending. Um, it has a very bizarre ending to be completely honest. Like the final scene, you're just like, what? Why? Why? What's happening? Why are we here? What does this even mean? Somebody who is like super into metaphor um, and kind of reading between the lines, which isn't always my favorite thing to have to do with a book, um, you'll you'll like it. I don't know. So it was it was interesting. I think I gave it a four stars, four four and a half stars, something like that. I liked the narration. That's a big thing with audiobooks is the narrator, um, and she did kind of sound like she was trying to be really intense. So <laughs> it was. Um, not the most enjoyable ever. Rouge was, it was good. I think she was trying to match, the narrator was trying to match the tone of the book. So it, it did make sense, but yeah, that one was a four star. And then I read um, Voices by David Elliott. So again, going along with the new story that I'm writing, I'm kind of reading books that are sort of, I think gonna give me some sort of like vibe or have a sort of theme of something that I want to explore in the book that I'm writing. Um, and so this is about Joan of Arc. It's the final hours of Joan of Arc. That's the subtitle. This is a YA book I've had on my TBR for forever. So I finally went on eBay um, and got myself a used copy. It just says warrior, witch, sinner, saint. Before she was any of these, before she heard the first angel speak, before she died, Joan was just a girl. Um, and so it's a novel in verse, which I found really um, interesting. And then a lot of the poems, um, let me see if I can find a really cool one. Some of the poems are shapes and I forget what that's called when you like shape the words to, to form something. Um, maybe a little bit tricky to read, to be completely honest. Like here's one called The Crown and it's like a circle, like a crown. Anyway, overall, I thought this was interesting. Um, it was like a four star for me. If you are super familiar with Joan of Arc and her story and like growing up and hearing the voices of she assumed to be angels, if you're familiar with her story and her childhood and um, the Siege of Orléans and what she was able to do as a very young girl at the time and how she completely just shook France. It's kind of an insane story and that's why I wanted to read a little bit more about it. Um, now this book isn't gonna tell you any more information than if you went on like Wikipedia and read about her, um, but it was interesting reading the poems because they, David Elliott tried to, in most of the poems, he used the forms that were popularized in the 1400s, like 15th century forms of poetry um, as a sort of way to like pay homage to Joan. Um, and so a lot of them are, quite, they're quite repetitive sounding to be completely honest. So you have to kind of, which it does add a sort of rhythm to it, but the, a lot of the poems do sound very repetitive. So just go into it um, knowing that and it won't be as like slightly, not that it was annoying, but it's just a lot of times it feels very like circular. Like we're kind of like, <laughs> we're going in a circle and I'm reading the same thing over and over and we're not really getting anywhere. Um, but that's him sticking true to the form of poetry that he's using. Obviously, if you are writing in a particular format, then you can't break free of that because the whole point is to stick to the format. One of the things that I found most interesting that I don't know that I loved that he did was he he writes from the perspective of like inanimate objects and like their opinions about Joan and what they think of Joan, which I just found a little bit odd. Like he writes from the perspective of fire. He writes from the perspective of victory and silence and lust and the sword. It's odd, like, I was kind of wondering why are we anthropomorphizing objects and giving them an opinion about her? Like, it was weird to read a poem from the perspective of fire, like, hungering for her. I don't know. Uh, but overall, if you are a fan of Joan of Arc or just want to know a little bit more about her, then this could be an interesting one. And it's fairly slim too, so it's not gonna take you all that long to read. Then the last audiobook that I listened to, um, second to last book that I read for the month was What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. This was a disappointment, unfortunately. And it's so weird because I feel like it's been everywhere. It's been advertised to me so many times on like Pinterest and scrolling on Instagram. I really thought it was like the new big thing. It's part of a series. I know there's already a sequel. Um, the Sworn Soldier? 
The Sworn Soldier series, I think is what it's a part of. Um, it's book one. I listened to the audiobook. I have seen people give this book, particularly the audiobook, a one star review just for how bad the narration is. I don't think that that's quite fair because it doesn't really speak to anything about the book or the plot itself. Um, but yeah, I think this was probably the narrator's first audiobook, maybe? I'm not sure. They didn't do a great job. I basically just kept reading because I had a an idea of where it was going and like I'm pretty sure like I was like I think I know the twist like I think I know where this is going um, and it was only a five hour audiobook so I was like you know what I'm gonna listen on 2.5 speed or 2 point speed whatever two times speed and just see if I'm right and I was so if you know anything about mushrooms um, or if you have read The Fall of the House of Usher by Poe which is what this is sort of based on um, or in heavily inspired by then you're gonna guess the twist. You are. You're gonna guess the twist the first time that you get the scene with Madeline, the sister who's ailing um, at the big terrifying mansion. The first scene that we get from her, I was like, that's, that's what's happening. Because the mushroom trope is so heavy, they're on the cover, um, the first line is like a description of a mushroom. So if you know anything about mushrooms at all and what they're capable of, then yeah you're gonna know, you're just gonna know, you're gonna know what the twist was. Um, so yeah, that was kind of disappointing. I think I gave it two and a half stars. Another reason why people have um, given it one star reviews is because there's like a, a lecture you get in the beginning, I think it's like maybe like in chapter two, um, about all the different pronouns that are specific to this world, but it doesn't really feel like it has like a place, like there's no, like it doesn't ever come back up again. Maybe the author's setting up something for the sequel, I don't know. Um, but I've seen other people give it a really bad review for that because it just feels so... It feels like the publisher just told the author like, okay, we need some sort of like contemporary modern issue um, that we can shove into this story to, to, you know, to make us seem really progressive. It's just so odd to me because you have an author who is a Hugo and Nebula award winner and this is like a very kind of surface level it's not scary at all, it's supposed to be creepy. Like if you've read The Fall of the House of Usher, you do kind of get this sense of like dread when you enter the manor. Obviously that's what Poe was very good at. Um, and so it just felt like the author was like tired and the publisher was like, we need, but we need something. Like you gotta, you know, you gotta give us something. And so they were like, okay, let me just like do a retelling that way I don't really have to come up with any really unique plot points. The story's already there for me. Um, and I'll throw in some like modern progressive issues like with gender. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. So I will not be reading the second book, unfortunately. And then the final book that I read um, was for my Joy Harjo like oeuvre reading um, because I'm trying to finish all of her work. I have a few left. I'm so close to being done and then I will do um, a video all about her. But this was Soul Talk Song Language. Um, the first like maybe half or three quarters is interviews with her. That's actually the, like the subheading is conversations with Joy Harjo. I thought it was all interviews. Um, and actually once you get back into like the last quarter or maybe the last third, we get some like newspaper columns and articles that she wrote as well as a few really short prose pieces. Um, and so I loved this. This is really fascinating. If you are interested in reading a native voice, she is one of the most prolific in my opinion. She's been the US Poet Laureate multiple times. I don't know if it was back to back, if it was like two or three times, but she's just, her career is absolutely insane. She's mainly known um, for her poetry. Um, but this, the, in the interviews, a lot of the, a lot of the questions were kind of the same and sort of getting at the same thing. So you do hear a lot of her answering kind of the same questions, but I really liked them because she goes into her writing routine. She's asked about like what poetry means to her and you get some of her background. So I may have shifted a little bit. Battery died, but we're back. I think I was saying um, that I really like the way that Harjo dives into modern day issues. She just has such a good eye and she just has, I don't know, it's like she just gets it. Like she she sees what's happening in modern day, particularly American culture um, and how it is so, so different and it's changed so much from typical traditional um, native ways and that culture. And she sees that it's kind of like causing a sickness um, to the earth and to humans. And I just feel like we need to listen to her. She's just, she's just, 
she is somebody she's somebody who's saying something really really important um, and and we need to listen one of my favorite quotes um, she's she's specifically talking about like television and like violence and stuff in television but I feel like it could also be a metaphor um, or you could also talk the same way about social media she says ratings go up commensurate with sensationalist images which usually involve fast sex violence and drugs and with ratings come sponsors who will pay more for their commercials advertisements for food that isn't really food for more goofy or violent tv shows happy drugs or a myriad of clothes cars and gadgets that we don't really need and we get hooked because nothing is required from us but our complacent, exhausted minds, which are complacent and exhausted because we're eating the food that isn't really food, watching stupid shows, taking all those happy drugs, and working eight or more hours a day to buy all those things dancing across the television screen. This, I guess, is what they always meant by civilization or progress. Like, she just has such an incredible way of writing about really important issues and I feel like that I read that and I was like damn <laughs> like that is that is how I feel um, I do feel complacent and exhausted and those are horrible things to feel when we're alive for such a short amount of time like I should be not that I should be ecstatic every moment of my life because obviously life is supposed to kind of ebb and flow and that's what our myriad of emotions are for I just find her to be incredibly important no poetry in here but I still found it all very fascinating um, so this was four and a half stars for me. And I think that's it. I need to get back into my stack for my reading around the world challenge because I feel like I've been neglecting it a little bit. Um, so I need to read some of those. I might do a spring TBR. It's been a long time since I've done, maybe last year? Was it last year or the year before that I did it, like a spring TBR? I will see you next week for, I think, a reading around the world challenge update video. I think it's part three. And I've also got another writing vlog in the works. So anyway, I will see you guys next week. Bye.